The Creative Psychotherapist is the official podcast of the Creative Clinician's Corner, a practice-building resource for creative psychotherapists. TCP Podcast is the cast for creative, expressive, and experiential-focused psychotherapists curious to learn how to design, build, and scale a thriving private practice. Your host, Raina Lombardi, interviews successful therapists about the tools and strategies they have used to develop creative-focused practices. They also talk about the products, services, and side hustles they have developed, using their knowledge and creativity to enhance their therapy practices, make a greater impact in their communities, and diversify their income streams. Welcome. Now here's your host, Raina Lombardi. Hi. Thanks for listening to the Creative Psychotherapist Podcast. I'm your host, Raina Lombardi, and I've decided to change the format of the podcast for the time being based on what's happening in the world right now. I didn't feel like it was appropriate to continue to put out content related to practice um, development and building a practice and just the other conversations that I've been having with um, guests that are ready to air because we weren't talking about what's happening right now and that seems um, just much more important to, to do. Um, so for the next few weeks, the weekly episodes are um, going to be just me, and I'm going to be talking about different topics related to um, what's happening and how it's impacting practices, and I'll be talking a little bit about my experience and how I've had to pivot and adjust policies and um, really you know, make some difficult decisions on operations and things like that um, in response to what's happening with um, the coronavirus and the social distancing and um, basically, you know, a lot of people in fear and, um, you know, not really understanding technology and um, you know, some people want to come in and some people don't want to do the technology. And so anyway, it's been, it's been challenging and it seems like it's been challenging for all the therapists that I have continued to um, stay in contact with. And um, we've been supporting each other through the process as best we can. So I want to do that. And then um, the other thing that I really want to do is there's another art therapist. Um, Her name is Nicole Porter Davis. And she and I had um, started doing a podcast recording, but unfortunately we were having um, some technical difficulties and um, it was just, it was hard for us to finish. And um, I wish that we had the opportunity to finish that podcast because it's really about um, responding to to traumas and organizing um, to respond to trauma. And so she and I are actually in conversation about doing a special series where um, each episode will be released um, one each day for a period of seven days. And each of the topics is going to be related to responding to um, trauma, which this situation is um, on on a global level. Um, Everybody's being affected in different ways. And um, so we want to be able to address that and... um, you know, make sure that people have tools and resources that they need to address this um, in their community. And Nicole had um, created and, um, you know, responded to some significant uh, traumatic events and, um, 
has a business where she teaches other people how to respond um, to traumatic events using art therapy and mobilizing um, people and getting funds to support that. So I'm really excited that um, we're going to be doing that. And as soon as I know the exact dates that that will be released, we'll, um, we'll put that on the website and post it on our social media and, um, and get that out to you. But I think it's going to be really helpful. Today, I really wanted to talk about um, how I've had to pivot in response to um, what's happening in our world and how um, I've had to make some big changes to how I'm doing things in my practice. Um, so first of all, I should just say um, I've had my practice for uh, going on five years or a little over five years and um, for the most part it's an in-person practice we don't really use telehealth so this is new and um, in saying that I also have to acknowledge that I've been doing telesupervision um, for art therapists from before that time um, you know, as an art therapist and other creative modalities, I'm sure you might experience it too, depending upon where you live. It might be hard to find access to a credentialed supervisor and um, in the community that you live in. And so by providing um, the tele-supervision service, um, we're able to you know, provide people with supervision at a distance. And so I've been doing that um, for a number of years and have done trainings um, on the topic as well uh, at the national conferences. And um, so I, I have some background in using the technology in this way to conduct telehealth. And I started using it in my practice just this past year um, with uh, one client on an inconsistent basis um, due to just some barriers of being able to come into the office. Attention creative clinicians, are you having a hard time trying to figure out how to show up in your practice or pivot or just manage it all during these uncertain times? We have a special practice support group now available online. Everyone is being impacted by the current global pandemic and your clients need you now more than ever. We believe it's important they have access to the services that you provide now and when social distancing mandates are lifted. We want you to have all the tools you need to step up and help your clients, so we're here to help. We know financially things might be in the air right now, but we have three webinars we'd like to offer you about how your therapy practice can continue to support clients during these times and as well as after it all levels out. Under normal circumstances, we would charge for a service like this, but that didn't feel right given the current circumstances. We decided to offer these webinars on a give what you can system. You decide what you're able to give based on the benefit of the information you receive. If you know you're not in a position to donate anything, please join us anyway. We don't want anyone feeling like they have to do this alone right now because they can't afford access to support. We are offering three webinars on the following topics telehealth, money mindset, and marketing. Visit www.creativeclinicianscorner.com to sign up. So I had already started working on um, my telehealth informed consent and had that already ready to go in my um, practice EHR, which I use simple practice. They're not paying me to say that, but that's who I happen to use. Um, <clears throat> and so I had my tele-informed consent ready to go, but I hadn't distributed it to all of my clients. And now in response to this, it was like, okay, I need to switch everything over to that. Thank goodness that I'd already created that informed consent document and um, had it ready to go in my EHR so that with each person that I reached out to and said, hey, 
um, I'm starting this option, um, you know, given the current circumstances and the recommendations that were coming down now, um, just thinking back two weeks ago, as this time is going by really quickly, um, two weeks ago, things weren't being um, completely shut down. And so we didn't have as much information and, and didn't really understand. So it, it started as an option. I'm, I'm, I'm creating this option for you. Um, if you would like to, um, here is um, the consent form. I'm gonna send it to you in the private portal. Please go ahead and sign it and then we can conduct our sessions online. If you do choose to come in, you know, I was um, offering that but at the same time, I was really being conscientious about spacing out when people were coming in the space so that there weren't a lot of people in the waiting room and I could go through and wipe down the chairs that I have in the waiting room and the door handle um, entering the buildings and do a quick cleaning and sanitizing of the restrooms and making sure that I can do the same thing on the chairs that we were sitting in and any materials that we used. And so that is obviously a different way of working and um, especially setting limits on materials because I think it's important for people to have choice and um, and I have lots and lots of materials, whether it's art materials or it's play-based materials um, for people to use. And I had to limit um, access to materials to only those things that I could properly sanitize and clean in between um, an appointment. And, and so that was very different where my typical protocol would be um, either my husband or I goes into the office and does a thorough cleaning of the office every weekend when nobody's in there. Um, so having to go through and, and clean in between that has been quite a bit. Now with the way things are coming down here, we are, the county is, issuing a possible stay at home order. And it's been a very difficult decision for me to decide that I have to shift to totally online practice. Um, but that is the choice that I have decided I needed to make. Um, I have some clients that the telehealth uh, platform just really doesn't fit. Um, it doesn't meet their needs and I can't provide the service through um, that, that method. And so um, we're gonna have to pause our work until this resolves, um, which is hard. And that's not an easy decision to make. As a therapist, I think, you know, we want to continue to be able to hold a space for people and be able to provide care. Yet at the same time, we also have to really think about that Hippocratic Oath, which is first do no harm. And I've been thinking a lot about that, um, you know, because, right, it's like, a double-edged sword in this situation. Um, if I don't allow them to come in for services and I can provide services to them via a tele model, is that harmful? But if I do continue to keep my space open, even though I'm doing the best that I can to ensure the cleanliness and um, sanitization of the space, I can't guarantee that somebody won't be exposed. And what would that do to the client? How could that potentially harm the client and harm their family? 
And so it's been a very difficult and um, hard decision for me to make, but that is what I am choosing to do. And so I have to inform all those families that um, until this passes over, we're not going to be able to meet because I don't believe that the telehealth model can appropriately meet the needs and um, and, I, and I can't deliver the services that the, the client needs through this way. And that just happens to be because of some of the populations that I work with. Um, but I have a lot of people in my practice that I can serve in this way and started that process two weeks ago. So <clears throat> it's not been easy, um, especially serving children. I historically have been using the video conferencing um, methods in supervision. So working with adults and, um, and even with the, the client um, that I started using telehealth model with last year, that's an adult. And so I've not used these methods with children until this past week. And that was I was having so much fear around it because I didn't know how I was going to engage little ones who normally we have a, um, a large room to move around in and um, there's, there's lots of activities that I have in um, the therapy room that are really set up for their needs. And, um, and we're doing a lot of play-based activities. And so I wasn't sure how I could translate that to the um, telemodel. I have seen somebody um, on Facebook, in one of the Facebook groups, promoting and advertising a teleplay training. Um, and I'm Sorry that I'm at a loss for that person's name, um, but I think that might be something I might consider investigating and and exploring and and taking um, if this is going to be held out for you know the next month or so. Um, I I think it's necessary so that I can continue to uh, provide that service to those kids. Um, I figured out ways to make it work and we used their stuffed animals that they have and did some almost like puppet type work with the stuffed animals. And I got to learn a lot about the child um, through the voice of the stuffed animal. Uh, which was really interesting. And I also got to learn a lot about their home environment and what that looks like, what their space looks like, and how well they take care of their things. And um, things that I normally wouldn't see because they come into my office, they can talk to me about it, but I never was able to, to see their space. And so that was an interesting and positive thing that came out of this experience, which I was pretty scared to do. Um, but I thought, okay, I'm going to do it anyway, even if I can't, even if the call is short, right? Maybe I only get to do a 15 minute session with a child because that's the level of attention. Again, thinking about, well, what's best? No minutes or 15 minutes? The 15 minutes would be best. So um, I was surprised that actually, like, they really were engaged for, you know, 45 to 50 minutes. I, I was blown away by this, that we were able to figure out ways to make it work. Was it different? Yeah, it was really different. Uh, very different from the way I would typically work. But at the same time, it, it was very helpful because 
it provided them an opportunity to really process and share how this is impacting them. And for some, they're, they're handling it really well. And for others, it not so much. That it, this has been very, very hard and, um, and they're struggling with a lot of worries. So being able to provide uh, the ability to continue to work together with the telehealth model, even though it might not be ideal and it might not be something that I continue to do with children um, after this goes on, I'm grateful that it exists now because it has allowed me the opportunity to continue to serve and, um, and provide space for those that I'm working with. Um, so I've had to pivot in that way and really just say, yes, I'm scared and I can still move forward, even though it's scary, even though I don't know what the outcome is going to be. If I can just try, do my best, really attend and track the child as best I can, which is what I was trying to do. Like, oh, I see you're you know, hiding under your covers now because a lot of them had to go in their, in their bedroom because that's where privacy was because everybody's home. Um, so that was interesting too. Um, and it was almost like a game of hide and seek kind of came out of that, which was really beautiful. And um, again, different from the way I would normally work, but it was great. We were able to make it work. But had I listened to my fear and just said, nope, I'm not going to um, serve kids because I don't believe that this um, approach or model is adequate to serve them, then I, um, I feel like I would have missed out on a lot and they would have missed out on a lot. So um, just working through my own fear of like, okay, this is different, but um, we can still do it and find ways to make positives. You know, the other piece is, wow, look at how much we're learning as a result of having to pivot and make changes in the way we practice. I'm learning so many new skills. I'm learning much more about my clients. Um, I'm learning more about myself and how I can continue to challenge myself and grow as a therapist and provider. And um, yeah, so there's that. The other pivot that I had to make was I had a training, a paid for training, which was supposed to take place last Monday. Um, the 23rd of March, or was it this Monday? Anyway, this Monday. <laughs> and the week prior, I was like, okay, things are changing really quickly. I have to make a call here. But the last thing that I want to do in these situations is have a quick reaction. Because when we're having quick reactions, we're really responding from that place of fear, which is usually not giving great advice. <laughs> you know, like when we talk with clients about fear and the role of fear and anxiety, you know, we help them to say, you know, feelings aren't facts. Um, the, the urges and the responses that you're having to this emotion um, probably aren't the best option. Let's pause. Let's sit with it. What is it about? Let's explore it. And so I've really been trying to do a lot of that myself in response to the situation so that, again, I'm not reacting, but I'm responding 
And I'm constantly doing that every day and reevaluating, okay, how did that go today? What do I need to do differently tomorrow? Do I need to change the way I'm doing things tomorrow? Um, and of course, that's how I've come to this decision today, um, recording on Saturday afternoon, um, March 28th from home, which is different because I brought all my podcasting equipment home. It's typically at my practice office. And um, yeah, like I, I made this decision this weekend that I have to go fully telehealth next week, which is weird. And, um, but it came out of not reacting, but really responding and really um, evaluating and uh, using careful consideration in how to respond to what's going on and what's best for my clients and um, the other therapists that I work with in my office and their clients and what's best for me. And um, yeah, it's hard decision making, but I can't stress enough that it is so important to come at it from a place of calm and really evaluating all of the factual information that you have and utilizing that to make decisions. You know, one of the reasons why I didn't want to totally close initially was because I, I didn't have all of the information. There was a lot of mixed information coming through the media sources and channels. And so I did not want to have an overreaction. I don't want to have an underreaction either. Um, so I made the choice and then um, to remain open, but but offer the telehealth for those that were ready to make that transition and wanted that, which also allowed me to minimize the amount of people that were coming in and out. And then um, again, like making sure that I'm cleaning and sanitizing constantly um, throughout and only offering limited materials and all of these kinds of things. So I was taking precautions based on the information that I had. And now, as that information has changed, well, I've had to pivot again and make another change. Is this going to impact the financial stability of my business? Absolutely, it already has. Um, however, I am working really hard not to, um, you know, respond to that and just really focus on what are the things that I have control of right now? What are the things in my practice that I have the capability of doing so that I can continue to support my clients and that I can continue to support um, other therapists in their practices and the supervisees that I have? How can I continue to support them as they're um, responding to all of this too? Um, so yeah, response, not reaction. And I know I kind of went on a tangent because I was originally going to talk about the training and how I had to pivot that training. And so I, again, well, what's the best thing that I can do? I don't want anybody to be penalized as a result of this. So I refunded money to people that did not want to um, attend a, um, a Zoom-based webinar training versus the in-person training that I had originally scheduled. One, the other piece to that was I said, well, I'll offer the training again in July. So I have another in-person version of the training to be held at the office in July. I don't know if things will be different by then. I'm hoping that it will. Um, if not, I'll just push it out a little bit farther. I'll make the call um, again later on when I have more information. 
and I offered them to either get a refund to attend the Zoom training or they could attend the Zoom training and come again and attend the in-person training when that time comes. So I really was trying to um, be conscientious of everybody that signed up and um, continue to meet their needs. And then very, very quickly, I had to practice and figure out how to use Zoom to host a training, which I'd never done before. I've been on like Zoom um, conference calls and things with other people where somebody else was facilitating the process, but I've never been um, on the facilitation side. So that was totally new to me. And again, anxiety provoking, like, what am I going to do if the technology fails? What am I going to do if I can't figure out, you know, the screen sharing piece? What am I going to do um, if, you know, whatever the worry was? Um, and then I said, okay, if those things happen, I will respond to them in the moment. I will find the best way that I can to respond to them. And I am just going to accept that the people that are going to show up and take the training, they're going to be kind, they're going to be patient, and they're going to be understanding if that does happen, given all of the circumstances that were going on. And so that's what I did. And I rehearsed and practiced over the weekend um, and uh, hosted the training online on Monday. And that was my first time doing that. Um, so I feel like one, I'm so incredibly grateful that we have the technological resources and programs out there to be able to continue to hold space for people, to be able to continue to educate and train people and, and support one another right now. Um, and on the flip side, I was like, wow. I learned a new skill that now moving forward, I can continue to use in my practice. I can continue to use it in my practice, but also in the consultation business, uh, the creative clinician's corner where the podcast is um, housed and uh, located. So there's positive outcomes to all of this if we are willing to focus on those versus focusing on the problem and focusing on how hard it is and focusing on um, all of the reasons why it's not going to work or, um, you know, what have you. So I know for me that really is an asset that I possess that, um, yes, am I struggling and, and having my own worries about it? Everything that's going on? Absolutely. Um, the other day on my way into the office, um, I just became flooded with tears. No reason really just kind of the difficulties of all of this. Um, and so I just allowed myself that time to cry and then say, it's all right, whatever it is will be and we'll continue to move through it. And after things resolve and we go, go to a new normal, people will need our services more than ever because this really is a um a global trauma right now and it's impacting people in various ways but it's impacting us all from little ones to elders you know at every stage so I encourage you all to be patient with yourself. 
to embrace the pivot, to allow yourself to look at all that's happening and all the changes that you're having to make as an opportunity for learning and growth in running and operating your business um, and learning and growth in your life. Anyway, um, I appreciate you all listening and um, I'll be continuing to record some individual episodes. Uh, the others are going to be about different topics. Um, I'm going to go into a little more detail with telemedicine and I want to talk a little bit about money mindset in another. And um, one of the other things that I really want to talk about is self-care during this time, which is so important too. And um, in addition to just keeping up with the regular release of the podcast on Wednesdays, uh, we're going to issue that special um, edition response with Nicole. I don't know when the date of that release is going to be. I'm really um, hoping we're able to do it on the 5th, uh, starting the 5th um, of April, which is a Sunday, and going through the 12th, so releasing an episode every single day. And um, in addition to that, I am going to be hosting a Zoom meeting. It's um, a support style um, opportunity for you to receive support in a group with other people going through this. And those are going to be the um, Monday, the 6th of April at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And um, I'm looking at my calendar here, so bear with me. I'm sorry. And then the next one will be the 6th. Uh, no, the 6th will be the first one. So the 6th at 1 p.m. And that Zoom support call is going to be focused on the topic of telehealth. So folks that need some support around that, want extra guidance, um, really want to discuss the ins and outs, I'm going to be doing that um, for people. So if you want to join, um, we'll be putting the link to that, um, to how to sign up, the RSVP to sign up, and the link to the Zoom meeting on the Creative Clinicians Corner website. And We'll write all of that in the show notes. We're in the process of creating all of that right now. So I don't actually have the, the link, but it will be posted in the show notes so that you can head over there to sign up for that. The meeting on the 13th is about going to be focused on money mindset and how to not fall prey to a scarcity mindset during this time when there's a lot of economic change in the world and in probably in your practice. Um, and how can we still manage to keep a positive mindset so that we can continue to work in different ways? And that might mean changing the way you operate or providing different types of services and different price points. Um, so we'll be focusing on that on the 13th. And then on the 20th, um, again, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, it's going to be focused on marketing. So if folks are needing additional support around marketing during this time of crisis, because that is impacting people, you know, if you've been on, um, I know I had to cancel um, several speaking engagements where I was scheduled to go out and talk with other potential referral sources, other human service providers in my community about the work that we do at Florida Art Therapy Services. Um, those got canceled because, well, you know, this is happening. I had, um, 
a large scale um, training that I was scheduled to do at another um, large group practice about an hour away from me. And again, that got canceled because there was just too many people. And at that point, um, I hadn't yet figured out that I could do the, um, the training via Zoom. So I'm going to reach back out to them and see if we can reschedule it and still offer it, but just do it via Zoom instead. Um, so we're going to be talking about different ways of marketing during this time of crisis. And so if you're interested in participating in any of those um, Zoom calls, um, please do head over to the website where you'll find out more information or you can look in the show notes. And um, what we're doing is we're offering it to anybody. Um, if you're able or you find that, hey, um, the information that I was able to receive as a result of participating in that call was really valuable and helpful, um, there will be a, um, a donation button and feel free to donate um, anything that you feel appropriate. Um, it's certainly not a requirement, but this is one of the ways I'm thinking about changing some things. Um, so it'll be, uh, you know, donate what you can, because I want to be able to support everybody, even those that might not have um, the economic resources at this time. So um, yeah, and well, stay healthy and try to stay positive and find um, find positive ways to view your daily experiences right now um, and focus on that. And I think it'll be helpful in, in getting through this and we will get through this and um, we'll get through it together. All right, guys, have a great day. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Creative Psychotherapist. If you like what you heard, please rate, review, and subscribe wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. For show notes, downloads, and additional resources, head over to the website at www.creativeclinicianscorner.com.